On this edition of Food for Life, Father Mark Goring looks at Be in the Presence of God. For me, the ideal is to start your day with prayer and then just continue to be in the Father's presence all day. Scripture says, From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Give thanks to Him all day. Be in His presence because His presence is wonderful. So Luke 15, the parable of the lost son, the prodigal son, a powerful story, a story that touch, touches our hearts. It's interesting, this young son, he wanted out, man, like, he wasn't happy in his father's house. Now, we don't know exactly what his problem was or what the problem was, but we know he wanted out. Now, I'm not going to ask for a show of hands, but maybe there's some young people here, maybe some teenagers who, man, you want out, you know. As soon as you get a chance, you want out of the house. You want to be free, you know. He said, I'm not going to ask for a show of hands because your parents might whack you, you know. And <clears throat> I guess it's a two-way street, though. There's some parents, I won't ask for a show of hands for this either. Some parents, you want them out. <laughs> I was visiting a family once, and um, there was a few teenagers, wonderful teenagers, but there was a big sign uh, in the home, and the sign read like this. It said, teenagers, tired of being harassed by your parents? Act now. Move out, get a job, pay your own way while you still know everything. <laughs> you've, you've probably seen that one before. You might have also heard the saying, you know, a, a child thinks that his parents know everything. A teenager thinks that his parents know nothing. An adult realizes that his parents knows a lot, you know. And so, uh, so maybe there's some of that in this prodigal son. Maybe there's just kind of a, a, an immaturity that we all, we all experience. Um, but the Gospel of Luke, with these three parables, the parable of the lost sh uh, sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son, they say that this Gospel is considered a summary of the whole gospel or the whole Bible. A summary of, of the whole gospel message, all of Scripture. And it's basically this, humanity has rebelled and turned away from God. We've rebelled. We've rebelled and turned away from our Father. But God now seeks us. His response to our rebellion and turning away from Him is that He seeks us, especially in the the parable of the lost sheep and the lost son, there's this act of seeking out what was lost. In the parable of the prodigal son, the father's obviously waiting. He's looking for his son's coming. And God, our father, he wants to reestablish our relationship. The relationship that has been broken, he wants to reestablish that relationship. He wants us home. Again, a summary of the gospel. God the Father wants us home. As I was thinking about this, uh, this gospel and preparing this homily, I found myself thinking about my own relationship with my dad. My relationship with my dad. And it's interesting how in Scripture, our relationship with our parents, our relationship between parent and child is very important. It's very important. For example, in the Ten Commandments, we see in Exodus chapter 20, the fourth commandment is the only commandment that has a promise tied to it. Honor your father and your mother that you may have a long life in the land the Lord your God is giving you. There's this promise. Those who honor their father and mother We'll have a prosperity. We'll, things will go well for you in some mysterious way. And I think this goes on beyond, you know, religious observance. It's a basic human principle. People who honor their mother and their father, things work out for them. Things go well for them in some mysterious way. It's also interesting in, uh, in the Old Testament the last book of the Old Testament, in, in most uh, compilations, some uh, Bibles put the Maccabees at the end of the Old Testament, but uh, in, in many Bibles, especially the one we use in our lectionary, the NAB, uh, we end with the prophets. 
And the last prophet, this is right before the New Testament, the last prophet is the prophet Malachi. And the last verse of the book of Malachi uh, is chapter 3, verse 20, 23 and 24. It says, Now I am sending to you Elijah the prophet. We know that's John the Baptist. Before the day of the Lord comes, the great and terrible day. And it's interesting, right into the New Testament, we start with John the Baptist. So it's, a, it's an obvious link. But again, this is the last verse, verse 24. He will turn the heart of fathers to their sons and the heart of sons to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with utter destruction. Again, that, that highlighting the importance of our relationship with our parents. And again, the, the, the consequence in Malachi it ends, lest I come and strike the land with utter destruction. If we dishonor our parents, there's a destruction, some mysterious destruction that will come to us. And so again, I was thinking about my relationship with my dad. I'm very blessed. I have a good relationship with my dad. Um, I had a good relationship with my dad most of my life. When I was a child, I loved my dad. He was my hero. I was convinced he was the strongest person in the world. He knew everything. And like a good parent, you know, towards his young child, you know, my father, my father delighted in me. You know, he liked his son. He liked all his sons. You know, he, was, he showed a lot of affection. And so I had just, just a tremendous love for my dad. And he would say nice things to me. I remember sometimes he'd say, what would I do without you? And that just filled me with this, this sense of being loved and a love for my dad. And I remember there were, there were times where my dad would get mad at me, probably my own fault, but he'd get mad at me. I'd go to bed, and there'd be this heartache, literally, not just figuratively speaking, my heart would ache. We all know what that feels like. And I remember thinking to myself, like, why is my heart aching? Like, what does this, this organ, I wasn't that sophisticated in my thinking, but, you know, later thinking, like, what does this organ, whose job is to, to circulate blood through the body, why is it hurt? You know, what, what does it care about the, the, the pain of my relationship with my dad? But, there, you know, there'd be a heartache. And thanks be to God as a child, you know, the next morning, everything was all right. I, you know, received my dad's love again. Um, but then entering into teenagehood, teenagehood's a, a tough time. I mean, I, I still had a good relationship with my dad, but, you know, there was tensions, and, you know, I was trying to figure out how to be a man, and, you know, they call teenagehood the dark ages, you know, adolescence, the dark ages, you know. Uh, so difficult time, and I guess part of what's difficult is, you know, in, in teenagehood, there's this very difficult transition from being dependent on your parents to becoming independent. And that's very hard for teenagers, and maybe it's sometimes even more hard for parents. And so it's, it can be a very kind of difficult transition. And in that time of transition, there were some difficulties, but overall, uh, you know, I maintained a good relationship with my dad. I also had my conversion experience as a teenager. That changed everything. It made me a new person, a better person. I thank God for that. It, um, and then entering into my 20s, into, you know, late teenagehood, early 20s, that's when you, you think you have everything figured out. You know, you know it all, you're discovering the world, you're becoming so sophisticated, and you're thinking, and with that comes a kind of a criticalness, because you discover, like, man, my family, we're quirky. You know, my parents, they're, you know, there's quirky stuff. Now, I, I looked up a definition of quirky. I wanted to make sure I was using the right word. Quirky, characterized by peculiar or unexpected traits. Behavior that is unconventional, surprising, or odd. Now, the truth is, is every family is a little quirky. Amen? <laughs> We're all a funny bunch, you know? And, and, and again, in, in the early, early 20s, there's kind of this criticalness, you know? Um, but I got over that. You know, I, I quickly discovered my parents knew they were quirky, and they were quite content being quirky, you know? And uh, we all get to a place like that, you know? Um, but then, by the grace of God, into my adult life, I've been able to uh, enjoy a wonderful, mature relationship with my dad. Before being moved out of Ottawa, my first six and a half years of priesthood, I was in Ottawa close to my family. And I would spend my Mondays, I had a little cabin in the woods, and most Mondays my dad would come and visit me. Sometimes my mom as well, but usually just my dad. And during those years, uh, 
I, I, I had just wonderful time just being with my dad. And because of my own kind of conversion and my dad's, my dad's a man of faith, our own kind of growing in the Lord, we'd been able to reconcile, to ask forgiveness for the things we needed to ask forgiveness for and all of that. So that by the time I, I was into my priesthood and, and, and enjoying this time with my dad, we had a very good relationship. We'd spend time together uh, on Mondays. We were at a place where I accepted my dad. I, was, I, I wasn't critical of him anymore. My dad accepted me. He wasn't critical of me anymore. And we just enjoyed each other's company. And it, it felt kind of strange because it seemed like for years there had been kind of tension in the relationship. But now, at that, you know, in my early priesthood, there was no tension you know, like, I loved my dad. I accepted him. I wasn't critical of him anymore. He obviously loved me. He accepted me. He wasn't critical of me anymore. And uh, my dad's a, a stoic, so he's not really big on showing affection. But I knew, and he showed in his own way, that he loved me dearly. And so for me to leave Ottawa, that was one of the most difficult things. Those cherished times. And, and I recognized it at the time. I recognized this. I'm going to miss this. This is something beautiful. And, you know, I can, I can honestly say that, like, I love my dad. I love my dad. Maybe he's watching on TV or on the internet. You know, I love you. I love you, Papa. Um, he... <clears throat> and here's another thing. And, I'm, you know, I'm drawing a, I'm drawing a parallel here, so pay, pay attention here. He will always be my dad. It doesn't matter how, you know, accomplished I might become or what great things I might do or whatever else. He will always be my dad. And I, I proclaim that. That's, that's, that's both a reality but also a decision. He will always be my dad. And I'll be proud of it. I will always be in some way. Now, obviously, as life goes on, you know, things, they become, it becomes different. But I will always be under his care. No matter how, you know, elderly my, my dad becomes, I mean, I figured with all the crazy sports I'm doing, I might be going to heaven before him. But anyways, the point is, is that I will always be in some way under his care and also under his service. You know, my dad, if there's anything he can do for me, he'll do it. You know, uh, uh, he, he, he takes good care of us, his, his, his sons, there's four of us brothers. I'm thankful for him. Boy, am I thankful for him. I hope, like, I hope like me, you spend a lot of time thanking the Lord. And I hope one of the things you thank Him for, those of you who are blessed with, with an earthly father, a good earthly father, that you do thank God for your dad, your mom. I thank God for my dad. I try to thank God for my dad every single day. In a figurative sense, I've never left his house. Again, the story of the prodigal son, the younger son, he left his father's house. There's a deep uh, significance, or this is pointing to something deep. And though I don't live with my dad, again, in, in, a, in a figurative sense, I'm still of the house of my father, just like Jesus was of, of the house of David, you know, son of Joseph. I'm still, in a sense, in my father's house under his care, being going home to my family, still, in a sense, going home. We will continue with the teaching by Father Mark in just a moment. The Food for Life ministry is only made possible by the financial donations from you, our viewers. We ask that after the program, you prayerfully consider a tax-deductible financial donation to help us continue this Catholic television ministry. To save postage, you may now make your donation online. Just go to our website and follow the link. Thank you for your prayers and support. And now back to... Father Mark Goring. I continue to work on my relationship with my dad because as men, we tend to be lazy about our relationships. I try to phone home. I don't phone home as much as I should. When I'm home in, in Canada, I like to be with my family. I try not to be negligent in this relationship. And then finally, I, I love being home. Again, being home with my family is good. Now again, you're picking up. I'm drawing an analogy here. But before I make the parallel, I just, want to, I just want to highlight that for some of you hearing this, this might be painful because I know some of you, you don't, you don't have a father. 
or father, your father is dist distant, or maybe he abandoned you for, for whatever reasons. Maybe your situation with your earthly dad isn't that good. So I just want to say a word about that. First of all, I want you to remember that our God is a just God. He's just. And that means that for some reason, for whatever reason, you've been deprived of the blessing of having a father who's present, who loves you, for whatever reasons. God, in His justice, will fulfill your need. He will, he will meet your need. We see in Psalm 68, chapter 6, God is father of the fatherless, defender of widows. If you've been fatherless, God is your father in a particular way. The, the second, second point is that, that we need to remember is that, again, having, having an earthly father, a wonderful early, earthly father, it's a great thing, but it, it, is, it does not give us ultimate fulfillment. Only God can ultimately fulfill us. We hear even in Scripture, Jesus says, Call no man your father. And so, obviously, Jesus is not calling us to disrespect our parents, to not have a love for them, but He's calling us to see the ultimate primacy of God the Father. So let me go back to this parallel I want to make. Number one, I said I love my dad. This is, a very, this is a very simple teaching I'm giving you this morning, but it's very profound. Brothers and sisters, can you say truly that you love your Father in heaven? Do you love God? You heard me describe how much I love my dad. Do you love God like that and even more? You should. We're all called to, to love our Father in heaven, to not treat him again. And we, we call this kind of an adolescent relationship. I don't want to uh, pick on the adolescents today, but it's just a reality of this transition time. It's difficult. Some of us have an adolescent relationship with God. You know, God bugs me. You know, I wish he was out of my life. Tell me what to do. That's an adolescent relationship with God. Do you love God? Number two, can you say he will, God the Father will always be my Father? And there is no question in my mind about that. That is clear. That is close to my heart. God the Father is my Father. I love him, and he will always be my Father. We should be able to say that from the depths of our hearts. We should be able to say, I am pleased to be under his care. Because we know that God's care is a care of service. Another word we could say is to be under His rule. Because again, in our relationship with God, uh, we are children. He is, he, he is Father. And a mature Christian is able to say, God's will be done in everything. Yes, I have my preferences, but at the end of the day, I'm willing to put aside my preferences because I trust that God's plan is better than my plan. And again, an adolescent view or an adolescent relationship with God is like, God's trying to make my life miserable. He's not cool. He doesn't want me to have any fun. Yeah, right. God is the author of life. He wants us to have life in abundance. And a person of faith, a mature person, a person is able to say, God's will be done. I have my preferences, but at the end of the day, I want His will because I trust Him. He's all-powerful. He's all-knowing under His care, under His service. I'm thankful for God the Father. Can you say that? Again, I love my Father in heaven. I'll always be His Son. I'm happy to be under His care, and I'm thankful to have God as my Father. It's not just a burden or something I accept, but it's awesome. It's awesome being under the care of a Father who delights in me, who made me, who's always ready to forgive me, who spoils me. I will never leave my Father's house. So many people think, oh, I don't want to have anything to do with the church or religion or Christianity or his rules or whatever else. I will never leave my father's house. I love being in my father's house. I love being under his care. To me, to leave the father's house is to go to a land of desolation, a land that might give some fleeting pleasures, but eventually the famine will come. I never want to leave my father's house. Sure, there's rules. You know, God, God's not like a, you know, a, a, a grandparent who just loves to spoil and dote on his grandchildren. God's the type of guy, like, he wants to make you a better person. 
You know, it's kind of like the image, some of you ladies have purses. What happens if I knew there was something rot, rotten in your purse and it smelled, like everyone smelled? And I said, hey, can I have that thing in your purse that's rotting? Now, can you imagine you're saying, no, no, it's mine? Well, that'd be foolish. You know, what God asks of us, what He demands of us, is things that ultimately aren't good for us. If He's saying, hey, this relationship, you got to let go. Why? Because it's rotting. It's, it's, it's rotting your life. And so again, being in the Father's house, it doesn't mean that the Lord isn't going to challenge us. He challenges us because He loves us. But again, His challenge is always because He wants us to be a better uh, person. And again, just as I'm working on my relationship with my dad, my relationship with God, my Father, is something I need to be intentional and deliberate about building. You know, uh, the commentator was mentioning, you know, praying treasure in heaven. It's a, it's a little attempt to invite everyone. Take some time to talk to your Father. For me, the ideal is to start your day with prayer and then just continue to be in the Father's presence all day. Scripture says, from the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Give thanks to Him all day. Be in His presence because His presence is wonderful. Work on that relationship. Go to Mass. Go to confession. Celebrate the sacraments. Read your Scriptures. Read good books. Go to conferences, good talks. Develop that relationship. And then finally, I love being home. Just like I love being home with my parents. I love being home, not just in a kind of a, a symbolic way, but you know, a Catholic church is the Father's house. And just like, you know, when you go home to your parents, they still have like an old VCR and the, you know, there's kind of, you know, some of the stuff, it might not be like to, to your preferences. Sometimes you go to a Catholic church and it's like, oh, I don't really like the, the, you know, the carpet, so I don't like the flower arrangements, so I don't like the preaching, I don't like the vest, I don't like the, who cares? This is your father's house. And deep down, it should feel good to be here. Do you love being in your father's house? Never stop, never, never stop coming to church. Never stop coming to your father's house, even if you don't like the old VCR and all the, you know, the old drapes or whatever else. This is your father's house. It's a good place to be. So brothers and sisters, why don't all of us, or those of us who want to, why don't we recommit ourselves to our loving father? Why don't we rejoice in his goodness together? Why don't we delight in him? And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to ask anyone here, maybe it's for the first time in your life, and maybe, maybe you've done this before, but it's been a while and your relationship has grown distant. If you'd like to recommit yourself to your Father, if you'd like to stand and say, yes, Father, I love you, in a public way, to say yes, you are my Father. You will always be my Father. I will never leave your house. I invite you to stand and let me lead you in a simple prayer to God our Father. Repeat after me. Father in heaven, it is good to be in your house. I love you. I thank you that you are my father. I want to be your son, daughter. I want to love you. I want to know you more and more. I want to come under your care. I give my life to you again. Take me into your loving arms. Hold me close to your heart. Purify me from my sins. Let's begin new again today, Father. I love you, my Father. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. You can watch this episode of Food for Life or previous episodes 24-7 anywhere around the world on YouTube. Just visit our website, foodforlifetvministry.org, and click on Watch Now on YouTube.
On the next edition of Food for Life, Father Mark Goring looks at lukewarm souls. You know, and St. Faustina, she's one of uh, my, my favorite saints. I like reading her diary. And one of the repeated themes in the diary that Jesus says to St. Faustina is how much he's grieved over chosen souls who are lukewarm. Chosen souls who don't really love God. If your life is anything like mine, you're a lot busier than you really want to be. And I find there's lots of things that fall through the cracks, things that don't get done. And one of those things that used to bother me was my plan giving. I'd want to financially support various ministries, but often, you know, I would forget to do it. Well, with Food for Life, there are many, uh, if you feel that, you know, the program has touched you and um, you're in a position to support us, um, it would be really helpful uh, if you could, uh, if you would consider supporting us in some way financially. And there's a, a number of ways that are, that are quite convenient now. So uh, if you go to our site uh, online, you can, you can use PayPal to, uh, to donate, uh, or you can write to us. And uh, one of the ways that you may find convenient um, is through uh, monthly giving, either through uh, credit or debit or check. And uh, you may find that as a convenient way. If, if you feel that, you know, Food for Life has really touched you and encourages you, uh, that would be super helpful uh, for the Food for Life ministry. God, God bless you and, and your generosity. We would like to thank you for your financial support of the Food for Life television ministry. Food for Life is funded only by viewers like yourself. We have no commercial sponsors. Your tax-deductible donations help pay for production of the program, pay the television station for the time that the program is on the air, and pay for the mailing of our monthly newsletter. Thank you again for your support of this Catholic television ministry. You can watch this episode of Food for Life or previous editions 24-7 anywhere around the world on YouTube. Just visit our website, foodforlifetvministry.org and click on Watch Now on YouTube. Food for Life is a non-profit Catholic charity funded only by donations from viewers. To help us continue this Catholic television ministry, please send your tax-deductible donation to Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y 2T8. To save postage, you may now make your donation online. Just go to our website and follow the link. We ask you to consider a regular monthly donation, either by post dated checks or through our website, to help us continue the Food for Life ministry. If you have never donated before, we ask you make your check payable to Food for Life. And our address is Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F. Toronto, Ontario, M4Y 2T8. On the next edition of Food for Life, Father Mark Goring looks at lukewarm souls. You know, and St. Faustina, she's one of uh, my, my favorite saints. I like reading her diary. And one of the repeated themes in the diary that Jesus says to St. Faustina is how much he's grieved over chosen souls who are lukewarm. Chosen souls who don't really love God. We invite you to send your prayer request to Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y 2T8. That's Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y 2T8.